Hello everybody, Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today we're going to start having a look at the score editor in Cubase. But before we start, I want to remind you that there's a link below to the free content navigation guide, which is an easy to navigate web page with links to all the content on this channel. And besides that, in the near future, I'm going to begin adding tips and other bits of information that will only be available there. You know, things like simple steps that will get you started and up and running quick. Things that are in the videos, but are written down in simple steps that serve as quick reminders when you need information down the road. If you're working with programs like WaveLab or Cubase Plug, Ends, or the Cable Guys Shaper Box 2, and many, many other projects that are in the works, then I know you're going to find, just like I have, that this is an invaluable study aid. And the other thing I want to make sure you understand is that this is not a simple PDF. This is a constantly updated page that has any information that uh, is new or anytime videos are changed, really anything updated. And once you have it, you will always have the latest information constantly updated. So if you haven't gotten it already, go to the link below, click on it, and save it to your favorites. It's my gift to you, and it's absolutely free. Okay, so let's get started. So in case you're not aware of it, along with all the MIDI editing functions in Cubase and all the other features, it also allows you to actually open up your MIDI in a score. That being an actual musical score with notes and time signatures and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'll be the first to admit this is a deep subject. And if you look at the manual for Cubase, the score editor is almost as big as all the other sections of Cubase combined. So as we begin to dig into this, which is a rather fascinating subject, we may or may not just stay on this track for a while. We may work on some of this, take a break, come back to some other features, and then return to the score editor. It's a huge subject. But for any of those with curiosity about it, it's also a very rewarding subject to understand and get a handle on. Let me just show you some of the very, very basics of what's involved with this whole thing. We're looking at a score right now, but I'm going to close this down. So if I take this part that I've created in Cubase, this little four bar section. Which contains a little melody and a little chord section. If you select either the track or the actual parts, doesn't really matter, and go up to the score menu, and there's an option here that says open the score editor, and the shortcut keys, if you haven't changed them, are control R, and you are given this, which now represents all the written notes on their respective musical staffs. And as the song plays, this little cursor kind of moves along through it. And there you have the score editor. Now, the amazing thing about the score editor and really what the reason why it's really so nice and interesting in the first place is that it's not only a written document now of your music, but you can actually perform an edit in the score editor and it reflects in your actual MIDI compositions. So let's say I take my mouse and I click and I drag over just these first couple sections here, the first couple bars. In my case, I can hit Alt-P to do a little loop recording. At this point, I can take one of these notes, any of these notes, any way I choose. Let's say I take this note and click on it. I can go up into the pitch area here and with my mouse wheel, I can start to spin on this note and I can change the pitch. And I can change my composition any way I want. Same thing applies to the length or the position or any number of things I would want to change. I can do it all right here on the score. It's just as flexible as using any other editor in Cubase. Once you've created your masterpiece, you can print it out. You can actually do recording right here in the score editor. It's just a huge universe of other options for you to take control of your music. But there is no denying that you're not just going to open up the score editor and understand what to do. There's quite a learning curve and a lot of things to understand. But like any other journey, you start with one step and here we go. So one of the first concepts to kind of understand as we journey into this world of the score is the idea of how MIDI is interpreted as opposed to how a score interprets things. When you're dealing with your MIDI notes, you're kind of in the world of ticks. 
meaning that you have a quarter note equals 480 ticks. And if you get into a score and you try to graphically draw something like that, you're not going to draw 480 of anything in a score, let alone 480 of something on a quarter note in a score. And then there's the, you know, beams and all these kind of things that are involved in scores. So there's a basic idea of interpretation when you start dealing with the score as opposed to literally what happens with MIDI notes. And again, if you try to graphically get everything that's happening on a MIDI performance, your score would be covered with little black squiggles that probably questionably the best musician in the world would have a hard time performing it. So that brings us to this concept that Cubase has introduced called a display quantize, where it kind of tries to simplify, you know, what the MIDI interpretation is in a more score-friendly way of drawing things. And the way you start getting into that is when you have your score, like we're looking at right here in front of us, if I go back up to the score menu at the top and I find my way down to the settings, this opens up this screen here with, of course, all kinds of options. But you'll want to locate your way to, there's a tab here that says Staff, and a tab below that that says Main. And as you come down into that area, there's an area that says Display Quantize. And there's two different displays, one for Notes and one for Rests. And one of the first things to experiment with, when you hit any of these drop-down lists, you get all kinds of note values. You'll want to try to go, as my recommendation, to the lowest possible resolution, meaning in this case it has a 4 here, which would stand for a quarter note. I mean, you have all of these, 64 triplets and 32 triplets and 64th notes, and, and sometimes you're going to need this kind of stuff when you're dealing with a score. But one of the places to start is to go to the simplest resolution, which in this case is a quarter note. I'm going to hit that. And then the same thing on the rest. So I'm going to go down to one that says 4 for the rest. And now I'm going to go down and I'm going to hit Apply. And if you look at the score, it has become much more simplified in the way it's reading. There's not a bunch of extra little squiggles for extra rests, for 16th note rests, and bars carrying over dotted small increments. So one of the things to try is to first play with that display quantize and simplify it and see if it makes your score more readable or makes more sense in the way a musician would actually approach it. If it looks like some of the details are missing that you think are essential, then you're going to have to start bumping it up, maybe from a quarter note to an eighth note and, you know, on and on. But that's the first thing is to play with that display quantize and try to simplify your score as much as possible to make it more readable. As you're looking at this display quantize area over here on the left, it also lists the actual tracks that we're looking at. And so here I have my piano and I have my pad. And another thing that happens... If I look down at the pad, if I change to that for a second, if I look at my score, I have an excessive amount of what's called ledger lines, which means the notes are not even on the actual staff, but they're way below and extra little ledger lines are written. Another thing you may want to try to do when you have situations like that is to go over to the right here where it says the display transpose, and you have a semitone drop down here as well and you can spin that up or down i'm going to bring it up to a 12 meaning it's raising it all up an octave and then i'll hit apply and that will move these notes back up onto the staff and they're not so much written off in some you know heavy ledger lines way above or below so those are two things to play with right off the bat is to mess with this display quantize and you really just have to experiment but try the lowest resolutions and then anything that seems to be too far up or down on the staff itself, change the uh, semitone display transpose as well. I'm going to close this out. Now another thing, uh, depending on what kind of mouse you have, but if you have a mouse with a control wheel on it, if you hold your control key down and spin that mouse, you can change the size of the score. And that really comes in handy as you're messing around with this stuff. If something doesn't seem to be readable or it's off the screen, you can change it, just spin it up or down to change the size. Another thing to play with and get familiar with early on, if you go back up to the score menu and come down, there's an option that says page mode. If you click on that, it gives you a picture of what it would be like if you print this out. And the same thing, you can hold the control key and spin with your mouse and you can get various resolutions of what you see on the screen. 
Okay, that's a wrap for today. As usual, if you don't have your navigation guide, be sure to pick that up before you go. It has links to all the content on this channel, ever-growing and free to use. It's right below this video. Just click on it, download it, save it to your favorites. So, the score editor. Welcome to the world of music notation. Now, you may be someone that knows not one single thing about written notation, but maybe you have a little curiosity about it. Or you may be someone that has some musical expertise but has never wanted to venture into Cubase's score editor because of the difficulty presented there. I can surely understand either one of those places. But here we go. Sit back, relax, enjoy the free education, and maybe it will expand some of your thoughts on things that maybe you haven't messed with too much. And who knows? Maybe there's a budding Mozart out there somewhere just waiting to be awakened. As always, it's great to have you guys here. I'll see you in the next video.